today I am going to be talking all about autumn skincare or changing season skincare. This time of year we've got obviously changing weather and you might be experiencing a few issues with your skin, maybe it's feeling a little bit drier, uh, you're not sure why it's responding differently or maybe you're just looking to switch up your home care slightly. So hopefully in this video I'm going to be answering all of those questions and giving you a little bit of insight into why your skin is responding how it is and then I will also be sharing some of my top skincare products to use at home to help combat some of the common issues that we experience at this time of year. Okay, so firstly, uh, like and subscribe. Join along with the skincare fun. You know, it's, uh, it's great to have you guys as part of the community. Autumn. We haven't got the amount of UV rays around us, so I think I actually prefer my autumn skincare routine, my autumn and winter actually, to the summer months. I find during the summer we're concerned about the, you know, the impact of the sun on our skins, and I find when the weather gets a little bit cooler, we can get a bit more targeted. We can get the retinols in and the brightening ingredients in our skincare and get a little bit more techy with our treatments if we're having face or clinic kind of treatments as well. So I think I just find there's more variety that we can do with our autumn winter skincare than we can in the summer months. You might, and I think to be honest, a common issue that we experience and I get my clients saying that they're experiencing at this time of year is definitely their skin feeling drier and they're not sure why. Well, the main reason is the change in the environment that we're in. It's less humid. Uh, the air is drier, the air is cooler. So those impacts definitely impact on how the skin is feeling and responding. There's other things as well. So we might have put on the central heating. I don't know about you, but I know there's a little bit of a battle in our house for is it going on yet, isn't it? And we kind of eke it out or try to as long as possible because once the central heating goes on, that's it. It's on for the duration of the winter. So we've got the colder air outside and then we've got the drier centrally heated air or log burner or open fire kind of air inside. So both of those aspects are drying to the skin. The other thing that you might not immediately connect but a change in diet. So you might not feel that it is a massive difference, but generally during the summer months, we're more keen to drink water. But when the weather gets cooler, we're often reaching for more warming drinks, maybe more milky, you know, the hot chocolates and those kind of things. So that side of hydration that we're taking on changes. I don't know about you, I probably eat more salad kind of vegetables and fruits and things during the summer months. Whereas when when it comes into the winter months, I probably opt for slightly more hearty warming foods and I think that that's a general rule. We're probably prone to going a little bit more stodge with our winter kind of diet. So it's not just as simple as, yes, change in season. There's a number of different factors that are going to be impacting on how your skin is responding. Okay, so I'm going to run through some of my top things that can help combat this. Firstly, and it might not come to you know the top of your list when you're thinking of autumn and winter skincare, but my first is continue with your SPF. Yes, you are not burning your skin in the sun, but the UV rays that are doing the damage are around all year. So keeping on top of your SPF and see it as part of your skincare routine, it's an essential. It's not just preventing burning. So I'm a huge fan of mineral SPFs. One of my current favorites is Oskia. It's SPF 30 Vitamin Face Cream. I'm not going to go into all the details about this. You can find a lot more detail over on my Instagram, my IGTV, whereas this is one of my Abigail's products of the week and I go into a lot more detail about it. But fundamentally, it's a mineral SPF. 
and it acts more like a cream with its SPF. So it's more like a treatment as well as the, the whole protecting thing. So one of the other things that you might be experiencing at this time of year or become more aware of is some pigmentation or hyperpigmentation. You might have a few little blotches of darker tone, some splodges. I'm not just talking freckles here. It happens as we age. You might notice, uh, I think we used to call them liver spots, on the back of hands, you know, the age spots. So it's where the melanin in the skin has, has changed and it's often as a result of UV exposure. So yes, it happens as we age, and yes, it can happen over the, the summer months. Often it's not until the autumn that we think, actually, this is kind of bugging me now. I might want to do a bit of a target on this. So you can do this in a couple of ways. With your home care, I'm going to give you one of my top picks in a second, with some peels, whether you get involved with some at-home kind of peels, they will help, they're not really going to treat. Um, or some professional peels in a salon or a clinic that can be targeted for brightening and supporting the pigmentation issues. Or another absolute gold standard treatment is IPL, Intense Pulse Light Therapy. It's not the same as laser, but it's using light in that kind of way. It's definitely not to be scared of. If you want more information, I have written a blog post on this, going into loads of details about what IPL does, how it feels, the other kind of skin issues that it's good for. So not to be scared of and can be brilliant for reducing and actually getting rid of the appearance of some hyperpigmentation. So I mentioned I'm gonna give you one of my top picks for an at-home pigment product. Actually, I've got two that I think are gonna be really helpful. Firstly, I've got IS Clinical White Lightning Serum. I love IS Clinical. I use it in my clinics. I use their professional peels and I have a lot of my clients on IS Clinical Home Care. The White Lightning Serum, it is targeting pigment issues. It's got other active ingredients in there that are great for all round skin health as well, but its main target is pigment balancing. It's a great one for nighttime. I wouldn't necessarily use it in the day. It doesn't have too much of a sensation and it actually feels quite silky on the skin. Another one that I, I think we need in our skincare range is, uh, sorry, our skincare home care as standard is a vitamin C. Vitamin C is a brightening ingredient you might already have some in your home care. It's quite commonplace now to be adding a vitamin C. I've never seen vitamin C get rid of pigment on its own. However, it's a great ingredient for just taking the edge off and supporting that process. So with that in mind, my current favorite retail vitamin C is from Philosophy Skincare. It's called Turbo Boost C Powder. It's in a dark colored bottle. Vitamin C degenerates when it's exposed to oxygen and light. So that's where all good vitamin Cs will be in a, a dark package. Because this is a powder, you can add it to any of your favorite serums. There we go. I don't know whether you'll see that there, some crystals. It's then activated at that point. So when you apply it to the skin, it's really active. Great, to be honest, a vitamin C is an amazing all-round antioxidant. So yes, we can target at this time of year, but you know what? Adding something like that in all year round is gonna be amazing. It's actually gonna be great during the summer months to just help soften the impact of uh, the UV and the sun on our skin as well. Okay, so dryness. Putting some extra hydration into the skin is essential, and we can do that with our skincare. I've got two products here which are brilliant for adding in. So I've got a hyaluronic acid serum from the Organic Pharmacy. It's a great all-round, I think it's a 0.2% hyaluronic acid. What I love about this, it doesn't feel sticky. It absorbs really nicely. Some hyaluronic serums can, I don't know, they just don't seem to, they seem to sit on the skin rather than absorb and, and feel like they're doing something. So this is a brilliant one for actually getting into the skin and doing something. It will work really well if you were to add your vitamin C powder 
to your hyaluronic. Hyaluronic you can use morning and night, you can cleanse, use this, put your moisturiser on. So a hyaluronic I think again is great all year round, but upping that during the cooler months is uh, an, an essential to getting that hydration in and safe for all skin types. So if you're acne prone, spot prone, hormonal skin, and you're worried about adding extra hydration because you're gonna break out, hyaluronic serum won't do that because there isn't an oil aspect to it. However, an oil aspect that is also good for all skin types is a squalane. Q&A skincare, it is called a face oil. This is, it's a vegan version of squal squalene. Squalenes we naturally have in our body. Traditionally or old school, they were derived in skincare, I think from shark liver, which obviously we don't necessarily want. So squalane is a plant-based alternative which is derived from olive oil. So if you imagine an olive oil, it's quite thick, quite viscous. Squalane is more velvety and more like a dry oil. You'll see that there's no colour to this. Olive oil is usually quite yellowy. And this is obviously replenishing what we're losing in the skin, but it's, yes, you can feel it, but there's a, there's a dryness to it and it just disappears into the skin. So you could very easily use a squalane oil on top of your hyaluronics and your vitamin C's and your brightening serums. You could use a little bit morning and evening. If you're feeling particularly dry, you could also put a moisturizer on top. They're a good all round add in some extra moisture and the skin does need oil. It needs oil and water for it to be healthy. So don't discount oils, I absolutely love oils, but this is a particularly good one for all skin types and being able to layer up and feel confident that you can use it in your regular skincare routine without feeling too oily, if that makes sense. So another must at this time of year is adding back in your retinols, especially if you've dropped them out in the summer. Retinol, I have a blog written about this, whether you're new to retinol or whether you're like a, you know, uh, a, a long-standing retinol lover, there is loads of information on the blog that you will find helpful, whether it's introducing it or whether it's kind of managing it in and out of the sun or, you know, being able to increase the levels of retinol. So there's a blog that you will find, I kind of think you'll find it quite interesting. So my retinol pick at the moment is from a brand called Medicate. This is Crystal Retinal 3. Retinal is slightly different to retinol, but they are both from the vitamin A family, but it's gentler in its process. And I, I've noticed that a lot of brands seem to be adding in a lot more retinol than just targeting and the retinols. They're really now beginning to see the benefits of, of both. Some products actually combine both. Some are focusing on one and not the other. Medicaid as a brand, I have long been a fan. I trained with them over a decade ago and I was using their peels within my clinic they were really kind of forging ahead with the use of retinols and vitamin C's early on. And their formulations, they're, uh, I think most of their, they're vegan, paraben free, synthetic fragrance free. So they, even though they're scientific, they fall into my clean bracket, which, you know, for me is a big tick when it comes to home care. But retinols and retinols, they are basically speeding up your skin cell turnover. So this time of year, whether it's pigment issues, whether it's fine lines, whether it's spots or acne, getting a retinol into your routine is a brilliant idea. It supports all of those things. Use them at night time. Some you can use in the day, but I, don't, I just don't like to confuse things. So as a rule, I like to keep them in the evening. So those are just a few of my autumn skincare 
switch ups and changes that you might you might already be doing uh, you might have some of those products in your routine actually let me know below have you tried any of these have you got any favorites that you love adding in in your autumn or winter skincare routine so I hope you found that helpful I love sharing these videos with you so you know I very much look forward to seeing you again soon